Hey everybody, I'm Ken and welcome back to another episode of The Lazy Gourmet. Today I've got an absolutely fantastic dish that involves dessert, it involves apples, and no sugar. That's right, it's a no sugar dessert that's perfect for our diabetic friends. I'm going to make for you today and show you how to make a beautiful apple blossom. These apple blossoms are typical of this time of year. It is apple season after all, so what better time to do that then? So, first things first, let's get started. What I'm gonna do is slowly start peeling these apples. These are empire apples that I got actually from my dad's backyard. He's got an awesome apple tree that he gets about maybe four or five bushels of apples every year. So we're gonna peel these apples. You're gonna need about half a dozen apples to make six apple blossoms that actually I'll show you are in this muffin tin. So it's very easy to do, a uh, very simple recipe. And the other kicker to this is that I'm gonna put in at the last minute some cayenne pepper. Just a light sprinkle just to give you that hum. Okay, I'm just finishing up with my last apple in terms of peeling it. So I'm just gonna take these, move these off, into the sink here. Well, I'll throw them out later because I always like to work in a fairly neat environment. Take our apple core, just core them out, just like that, very easy. And you're gonna do this for all six apples. Now, when you're coring these apples, it doesn't have to be an exact science because as we chop them up, we'll get rid of whatever other little bits and pieces there are in the middle of the cores. So I'm just gonna slowly cut them in half and make them a little bit smaller. Get them ready to go into our mixing bowl. So now we take our mixing bowl here and what I'm gonna do is just cut them into little bits and pieces. It doesn't have to be anything fancy any way you can. It doesn't really matter. It boils down to preference here. There's really nothing uh, nothing carved in stone, whether that be slices, big pieces, small pieces. It really doesn't matter. I don't mind personally the bigger chunks only because I like a bit of chew. If you prefer to have it a little bit smaller, that's totally fine. Whatever, whatever works for you. So there we have our chopped apple bits. The next part of this is your typical apple recipe, which is a little bit of cinnamon that goes into this, but a couple of teaspoons, some ground nutmeg, and the most amazing part of this recipe is no sugar. This is two packs of Splenda, just a regular sweetener. Take this and very simply just sprinkle it throughout this mixture, just like that. The sweetness now will come from the Splenda and the natural sweetness of the apples. There is nothing more to this. Once we add that, uh, what we're going to do is just slowly mix this up first. And then what I'm going to do is add a little bit of flour, maybe a couple of tablespoons into this mixture. And already it's starting to smell like that apple pie, that, that fall is here kind of smell, which is actually really amazing. Oh, there's one chunk, get that out of the way. Make sure that you coat as much of the apple bits as you can, as evenly as you can. That's really important because you don't wanna be biting into this and all of a sudden you taste this bite of pure cinnamon or this bite of pure nutmeg. That's not really, that's not cool. The other thing as well, if you notice so far, I haven't put any salt in this and I don't put salt in this at all. What we're going to do next is take our flour and basically, I usually do it by eye, but usually what you want to do is a couple of tablespoons is all you need. And again, that just thickens up as it bakes. That's all literally there is to this. And this is the apple mixture that we're going to use to fill 
our apple blossoms. All right, so next, take this, move it over here, clear this up, because the next part of this recipe is what is a little bit different. Typically for apple blossoms, they will use puff pastry or they'll use a regular pie dough. In this case, I'm using today phyllo dough. Phyllo dough will give it a little bit of a lighter uh, texture. It'll give it more of a crunch. And why not if we can? So what I'm going to do is, this has been obviously thought out. It's ready to go. What I'm going to do is very simply just unroll it in the way it comes, in the sheets that they came in. And this is where it requires a little bit of uh, a gentle hand to do this. What I recommend is you cut these phyllo pieces into eight inch or 20 centimeter squares. And I'll show you where I'm going with this. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just take a regular kitchen shears, cut them down the middle like this. And again, down the middle, which will give you approximately eight by eight sheets. So there you have those. What we'll do is we'll put these aside for now. Now that our phyllo dough is cut into squares, what I like to do is basically put them five, five thick or five deep. A way to get around this is you take our butter that's already melted and just lather it with your fingers. I'm very tactile when it comes to things like this. I prefer using, believe it or not, my hands or my fingers more than I like using a pastry brush. And just very quickly, just like that, spread it around, one on top of the other, and keep going until you've done all five. And we're gonna make this into a little bit of a nest. So, here we have our fifth one done. And I'll show you how we're gonna slowly start filling these. We're just gonna place them inside each one of these muffin spaces. Oh, there goes our oven, all ready to go. Just like that. And continue on doing the other five. So we're almost done our last apple blossom cup, if you will. Just gonna finish it up just like that. And I'm going to place it, like the rest of them, in the muffin tray. So you know what, these muffin tins aren't exactly only for muffins, they make outstanding molds for other stuff too. Great, great things. Here we have it, all six are done. They're ready to go, ready to be filled. They've been layered, the phyllo, about five, maybe six phyllo sheets in each one. So from here, what we do is take our, again, I'm gonna use my hands. And I like to fill these up because as they bake, they will shrink and the flour that we put in before will actually help thicken up the, the apple juice or the liquid from the apples as they bake. Okay, so now the next step to this is I take a little nutmeg and I literally, literally just, oh, that almost got away from me, just a few shakes, just a few passes over the apples to give it that little bit of extra nutmeg flavor. I'm a huge fan of nutmeg. I love nutmeg. I love it in everything, in anything. Pumpkins, apples, uh, cheesecakes, pumpkin cheesecakes, fantastic, absolutely fantastic uh, to enjoy it in. Now, this is where it gets a little bit different. Up to this point, it's typical of your apple pie, apple blossom, in terms of the pie filling. What I like to do next is add that little bit of zing to this. And the zing is cayenne pepper. And I'm not talking a, a ton of cayenne pepper. I'm not talking about a lot that you put it on and all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, one of my vital organs just burst into flames. Nothing like that. I'm talking half a pinch. And when I mean half a pinch, it is literally like just a few sprinkles if that on this and what that does is it will blend with the sweetness 
of the apples and create for you something, a flavor in your mouth that gives you a back end heat, that little hum, if you will, that buzz in the background. So this is it so far. This is going to go into a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes, 45 to 50 minutes, depending on your oven. And just keep an eye on it. As soon as you see this uh, starting to shrink in terms of the apple mixture and you see the phyllo dough starting to brown and crisp, they're pretty much ready to go. So I'm just going to take these, pop them in the oven, and I'll see you in a bit when they're done. So here it is, the moment of truth. My apple blossom is ready. It just came out of the oven. It is like scorching, piping hot. But if you could only smell this, it smells so good. What I'm gonna do now is attempt, without burning myself, to remove one of them so you can actually see uh, what it looks like. So I'll just move this here. I'll put this here. Hopefully you guys can see this. And very carefully, I'll just bring it out just like that. And there you have it, my apple blossom just out of the oven actually looks perfect. I'm actually going to try this since I'm here. I also recommend, I'm trying this now, but this goes awesome with ice cream or frozen yogurt or anything of your choice you can even put like regular yogurt on this and here is just oozing out and you can see it the phyllo is just crumbling away let me see how i can get to this let me try the apple first this is so delicious it is not too sweet it's not certainly not overly sweet mm. that cayenne comes in just as a little kind of offset to the to the sweetness of the apple mm. this is absolutely delicious my dear friends i thank you very much for watching it was a blast making this dish for you and showing you how easy and with no sugar how healthy eating dessert can be no no sugar at all i use splenda so thank you very much for watching until next time i'm ken see ya